Hi, where are you from? In suburban Chicago. What's your name? Never impressive. But never duplicate. Hey everybody, what's going on? Eric C here. Hope you guys are doing good. I'm doing just great. Back with the Flamed Chipson in white. So this thing is kind of nice. Uh, had to do a little bit more work to it than I thought. With the pickup uh, mounts, I ended up having to fill the holes with some toothpicks, gluing in with some wood glue, and then re-drilling the uh, holes because the pattern of the old cream ones did not match the uh, holes that were drilled in the body as far as for the new white ones. So what I'm using here is fishing line, and I had to remove the new uh, roller bridge that I ended up putting on here because the string spacing was incorrect. It's a 50 millimeter from E to E, so I had to go back with the stock one, and uh, I ordered a new roller bridge for this thing that's going to be the right spacing, string spacing that I need. So right now I am measuring the fret height, and what I'm going to do is add 18 thousandths more to that, and go ahead and start getting my uh, depth for the action height on the nut, nut at the uh, first fret. And pretty simple to do, not so hard. I mean, I'm using um, fret files that are set up for 10s and I'm using 9s on the guitar. It helps keeping it from binding. As you can see, I'm going on an angle towards the uh, tuners. Now I'm giving it a little bit of shape, fitting them in. And yeah, they're going to be perfect, not have any problem. Pop the nut back out. I only had it temporarily in place. Sand it down with some 1500 grit sandpaper to remove the file marks. I was using jeweler uh, files in order to get it down where I need it. And yep, I am buffing a nut for a guitar. Yeah. Using a little bit of rubbing compound, this. Uh, I don't know what was going on with this uh, buffing wheel, but man, it wasn't making a mess all over the place. Now, this cleaned up the string uh, slots on the nut itself, uh, polishing it up using a little bit of rubbing compound, not much. Like Again, this is a tusk nut that I'm putting on here, and uh, it ended up giving it a nice little polish, not too much of a gloss, and not like a matte finish either, and it came out pretty good. So that's it and I hope can get it, get it focus in a little bit better there you go so right here I'm going to permanently put the permanently put the nut in place a couple of small drops of CA glue some people like to use wood glue the CA glue works good as long as you don't end up like piling it in there to where uh, you know we have to try to remove it it's going to take a bunch of wood with it Wood glue is good, but I just kind of like to use the CA glue. Gives me a guarantee that uh, it's going to be in there, it's a tight fit, and it's not going to move. So right now I'm checking the action height and checking the relief in the neck. So everything seems to be in place where I want it. So I can go ahead and start putting the, uh, trying to find the screws, but put the uh, truss rod cover back on. I'm going to use the gold one, even though it's got some scratches and marks inside of it. It's not really that big of a deal. I've got an etching machine that, uh, it's a handheld tool for uh, kind of like writing your name in tools and stuff like that. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some type of design on this thing um, with that etcher and uh, call it good. So everything seems to be working out pretty good. I got my 18 thousandths at the first fret. Action height at the first fret was good. Action height in general was fine. So now it's time to start getting this wiring done. I'm using CTS long shaft uh, 500K pots. I'm using audio taper. And I just like the way that the audio taper kind of slopes itself uh, compared to uh, the linear taper. Um, they say that the audio taper uh, it's kind of it's pretty good for using it for both for tone and volume and I don't see why not using them for both uh, it seems like a good idea to me uh, again the slope from going from uh, using an audio taper I like the slope better uh, some people say where it's like when you're using the guitar on stage which I really doubt this is going to make it on stage but it, what it does is it's going to end up um, giving you a boost using an audio taper so right now I'm putting in the orange drop caps on the neck position I have a 22 on the bridge position I'm using a 47 
as my uh, tone caps on this thing. Now that's going to give me a little bit more of a growl on the bridge, so I'm kind of looking forward to that. I could have went with a um, uh, push-pull pots on this thing. Uh, I do have the option to do so as far as the wiring coming off the pickups, but I just chose to just keep it kind of like a, almost a standard Les Paul wiring on here. So you can see it's kind of a mess and I ended up having to fish a wire through in order to not have to remove the pickups again. I ended up fishing a lot on these pull push back cloth wires into the chamber to get it from one point A to point B, which is going to actually be used as a guide to pull the rest of the wires into the three-way switch position. So I ended up getting everything soldered, wired up, and you see pretty quickly. Um, not very hard to do. I mean, if you guys um, you know are afraid of a soldering gun and stuff like that, don't be. Practice on something metal with uh, some wires and, and kind of see you know how you are. Don't use a lot of solder on here. I kind of put uh, a lot of solder on here because I'm going to end up tapping uh, a couple more wires uh, to some of these areas that uh, you know graph or grounds. So I didn't really use the heat shrinking tubing on this. Um, I did kind of shield the caps a little bit so they're not going to uh, interfere with anything as far as in case someone gets bent or something. Why not I put the cover on there? No one's going to be in there anyways. So what I ended up doing over here is kind of just taking the, uh, the white and the red wire that are already soldered together and I, later on I put some heat shrinking tubing on them and kind of just tuck them off to the side so where they're not going to be in the way of anything. So I really didn't do anything fancy with this. I did, however, color coat um, the bridge humbucker a yellow and the neck a white wire. So you can tell the difference between which one, you know, where it's going to where. And then when you look inside of the, where the switch is or the control cavity, you'll be able to tell right away that where, what's connected to where. Makes it really easy. So all I gotta do is just kind of, you know, tuck things in a little bit over here to get the wires pulled through. That's the one thing, bad thing about these uh, cloth co coated wires that uh, they're pretty stiff a little bit and it's kind of hard to get the wiring to pull through. So I picked up some po white poker chips and I got a white uh, cap on the switch, three-way switch. And that's what I'm using on here. Now, the knobs that I ended up purchasing for this thing were the wrong size for CT, wrong size for CTS pots for the shaft, the spline shaft. Um, they don't fit. Can't put them on. So I had to reorder some new ones, and hopefully those will be in sometime this week, and I can get that uh, basically all buttoned up and taken care of and shit. So I ended up picking up a white uh, output jack plate. And I already got that mounted up and just getting the wires put in on this thing and yeah, so it's pretty much done uh, I'm gonna go ahead and tune it up and then go through uh, a little bit about this guitar This part of the video is going to go through what it took to mod the husk of this guitar now the reason why I say husk is because I stripped everything off the body and just used the body itself now this is not going to be including anything that I have on hand which is the tusk nut fret wire uh, cloth wiring CTS pots and these screws that I end up having to use the caps that I put on here uh, the three-way switch I already had so a lot of the stuff that I ended up already have and stock um, if you're interested to find out what that, how much that stuff is, I'm sure eBay uh, or your local or whatever uh, guitar store shop you have that you purchase parts from, you can find out from them. So, the husk. How much did it cost for the husk? Well, it was $179.10 and $130 for shipping. Yeah, that's where it kind of uh, I bit the bullet on that one. So, was this worth waiting almost a year for? So, let's see. Next up we have the tuning packs, which came from Stumac at $87.50. So I'm kind of adding everything up here uh, as far as we go down so I can give you an overall of what it costs for this thing. Nothing special, just in gold locking, you know, Calusos, Calusins, 3 and 3 locking. Next is the Tunamac Bridge, which 
this is not including the original bridge because the original bridge didn't fit. I put that off into my stock. I have a bunch of those bridges, just not in gold. Uh, I got black and silver. Basically, I'll use that for something else later on, you know, down the line. So this was nineteen dollars and ninety-five cents. Now this had free shipping, so that's kind of you know not that big of a deal. All right, now before I kind of said in a pre previous video that these were the most expensive uh, out of this whole build, which it wasn't. So I just looking at now at forty-seven dollars and ninety-nine cents. It was a one bid. That was me who bid it, uh, plus another five fifty for shipping. All right, it's starting to tally up over here. Next, we have the humbucker rings. So, I wanted them in white. Didn't really care for the cream color ones. And also, one thing that I noticed with the Chinese guitars that the pickup rings, when you change out the pickups, the pickup rings themselves uh, have a lot or a very large gap around the pickup uh, if you use the stock rings. So two thing, the reasons why I end up replacing the stock ring was because of the size is, is too big for the actual pickup and the color I want. So these were priced at $7.69 and also free shipping. So that's kind of nice. Now these Although I did buy some other knobs for this guitar, uh, I'm not going to include them on here because they didn't fit the CTS pots. So I'm only going to include what uh, I'm putting on the guitar. So this I had to buy two sets because they come in twos. So off the bat we have uh, $9.75. And so that'll be times two, so nine dollars and seventy-five cents, uh, and free shipping. So that worked out pretty good. Next we have is the output jack plate. So I only bought one of these, and this was at five dollars and ninety-nine cents, with also free shipping. So this is tallied up pretty good as far as ending up. Uh, doing all the mods that I've done and again like I said this is not including parts that I already had in stock which make up a big difference of how this guitar is going to function so last but not least is the poker chip so I ended up picking up two of these now they're out of stock so two of these at six dollars so it's had six dollars and eight cents uh, and it's well this one I kind of bit the bullet on too with shipping and shipping was another twelve dollars and uh, 44 cents so what did I pick up and modify well I modified a glorified Epiphone total for the outcome of this guitar as far as mining it goes like again not including the parts that I already had on hand, $525.82. That's including prices and shipping of everything that I purchased to mod this thing. Yeah, a glorified Epiphone is basically what I ended up purchasing here and putting together. I could have bought a ESP, I could have bought an Ibanez, I could have bought an Epiphone. Yeah, there's so many other choices out there that I could have made as far as purchasing a brand new guitar, which probably just a setup and not so many mods would have gone into it. But a uh, setup definitely. $525.82 to mod this husk. Was it worth it? 